Game of Thrones might be the most ambitious story ever told on television, and it is easily one of my favorites, if not my favorite. But after season 7 concluded, I was surprised at the amount of backlash uttered by some fans and critics. Much of the criticism focused on continuity, which is how the details within a collection of scenes work together to tell a story. In season 7, fans and critics alike pointed out several continuity problems. One common issue was that time seemed to pass differently. A runner could reach the wall and send a bird a thousand miles to reach Daenerys in about a day, just in the nick of time to save some of our favorite characters. The continuity was broken for convenience, of course, which tends to happen as main characters get put in more dangerous situations. This continuity break was noticeable, but it never took me out of the episode. Although it seems like more characters should have died, I still liked the overall plot and empathized with the characters. In this post though, I want to spend more time on the subplot at Winterfell. Every criticism I've seen talks about the conflict between Sansa and Arya, arguing that the scenes made no sense. And they're partially right. Eric Kane of Forbes wrote that based on his sources, the reason Sansa and Arya had to go through all this drama was so that they could reveal Littlefinger to the Lords of the North and the Vale, and execute him without upsetting the balance. This seems only partially true. Sansa did not reveal him only so the Lords of the North and the Vale would turn on him. She revealed him only when she believed that he could no longer serve the interests of the Stark family. Keep in mind, Sansa has become much more perceptive and calculating. She's learned from two of the best. And remember, Littlefinger is Lord of the Vale now, which gives him great power. And he rode to her aid when no other great house would, not even one from the North. So, it's quite reasonable that she would want to keep him as an asset for as long as possible. Even if we assume that Bronn told Sansa that Littlefinger had culpability for their father's death, Sansa might still use Littlefinger's newly acquired power to her family's benefit, at least until he became more of a problem. Remember, Littlefinger repeatedly professed his love for her and even wrote her aid when no other great house would. So, until he proved that his actions would no longer benefit House Stark, she would want to keep him around. But when she uncovered to her satisfaction that he meant to cause a rift between her and each of her siblings, that was her breaking point. But the Winterfell subplot does offer an aspiring writer an important lesson. The problem wasn't that Sansa surprised the viewers by turning suddenly to accuse the Lord of the Vale instead of her sister. When it happened, I was put in a good mood. Relief settled in that Sansa and Arya wouldn't become enemies, and that finally, Littlefinger's scheming came back to bite him. The problem came after, when I thought about what came before Littlefinger's demise. The previous scenes didn't add up to this surprising twist. This end makes the conflict between Arya and Sansa contrived. Not because they had these arguments between each other, but because no one else was around to witness them. Eric Kane from Forbes also pointed out that this was essentially a bait-and-switch tactic, and he's right. If these scenes were a ruse, if it were an all an act to make Littlefinger believe they were at odds, then who are they performing for? Why isn't Lord Baelish hiding behind a corner eavesdropping? Why doesn't he have someone listening in from below or just outside the room? Why isn't he getting a report from one of his spies, a spy who was perhaps planted by Sansa, which could have been revealed before or after Sansa turned to accuse Baelish of his crimes? The point is, Sansa and Arya need to be arguing with someone listening. Without someone listening, we are left to believe that they really meant everything they said in these scenes, which makes it weird that they're suddenly on the same page about everything after Littlefinger's death. Why didn't we hear Sansa or Arya say that they needed to do what they did to test Littlefinger? There's no reconciliation, which makes it seem like they planned the whole thing. The takeaway should be obvious. Forcing arbitrary conflict to create a shocking reveal creates a discontinuity in the plot. Lord Baelish could have received a report from one of the spies, detailing the conflict brewing between the Starks. Simply adding Littlefinger or one of his minions to each of these scenes makes the scenes fit, and wouldn't ruin the reveal. Something needed to be added, anything that the audience could use to infer that Sansa and Arya, or at least one of them, were acting to better understand Littlefinger's plans but you can't act if no one is around to listen. For some, the continuity issues ruin season seven. For me, they highlight the magnificent job the show has done adapting the dense novels to television. If 
we are only talking about glaring continuity problems at this point in Season 7, then the story has succeeded in getting us to care about the characters. Once we care about the characters, continuity issues lessen in importance, which is supported by Rotten Tomatoes' rating of Season 7. Critics score the season at 95%, and general viewers score it at 92 So for me, instead of Season 7 ruining the story, a few continuity issues instead show how great the first six seasons truly were, and they remind us that, once people get invested in the characters of a story, they will be more forgiving when little bits don't make complete sense.